What is going on, everyone? I'll make sure. Yeah, we're all good. Hope everybody is doing well today. Looked like there were a couple people waiting to get on. So, uh, as you can see, Jamie isn't here yet. She's coming, and I will explain <clears throat> where she is in just a minute. But I think some people are still. Mary, what is going on? Yeah, so Michelle, how are you? Welcome. So Jamie is um, at the doctor's with my son. She'll be here shortly though. She'll be here. Mega is here. What is going on? I'm just kind of stalling to uh, wait until more people are in here so they hear. Andre, how's it going, man? So um, they hear uh, where she's at. <clears throat> so I think we'll have some people. Luca, what's going on? Luke from Poland, how are you? Yeah, so Jamie is um, at the doctor's with my son. He hurt his leg last week. He hurt his uh, hip flexor. So he had an appointment about a half an hour ago. So she should be here within a few minutes, not too long. And I'll probably explain that again when a few people show up. Anna, what is going on? If you're new here, the way this works is basically I'll be here for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, because Jamie will be a little late. So we'll try to do an hour with her. And I just take your questions about learning English. And I can get most of them correct. Ken, how are you? I can get most of them correct. So there are some that I will maybe not be able to answer. And if you want to ask a question, just ask it right in the chat. Anna, how are you? Just ask it right in the chat and I will answer it. If it gets busy in here, sometimes we may have, you know, 30 or 40 people. I try to answer all the questions. If I miss it, ask it again because I try to answer all questions. Uh, Rod says he will not be able to make it today, but he did have a question. And this is pretty popular because in the United States, it's a presidential election. So there are two men right now running for president. And of course, because of the COVID virus, it's a little bit strange, but there's this guy named Joe Biden and Donald Trump. You may have heard of that guy. He is our president. Sylvia, welcome, welcome. And Rod's question is, what is the difference between a talk on politics and a talk about politics? So of course, it's one of those tricky questions dealing with a preposition. And I know prepositions in English can give you a super tough time. And what I always say is, even if you get the preposition wrong, the native English speaker should understand what you're saying. It just may sound a little strange to them. But there's no real difference here both of these can be used, a talk on politics or a talk about politics. Both are very commonly used. A talk about politics is probably the more accurate, more grammatically correct, but English speakers, we use both of them. William says that he can't be here today. I'm so sorry. Anna, it's your first time here. Well, welcome. Just in case there are other people who are new here, I'm an English teacher. I've been an English teacher for 20 years, teaching native speakers, but I started this YouTube channel about almost five months ago, and I try to go live four or five times a week for about an hour each time, and I take your questions that you may have about learning English. Anna asks how I'm doing. I can answer that one very easily. I'm doing quite well. The weather, we are outside. The weather, 
It's beautiful. It's not too hot, not too cold, just right. Goldilocks, is that a fairy tale in your culture? It is in the United States. Goldilocks, she wants to find that bed that's not too hard, not too soft, just right. And that's how the weather is today. It's just, it's just right, just right. Good. Ken says he's well, or she's well. I hope I get your gender correct. I try to remember where everyone, Aroni, from Italy. I try to get everyone's name correct, their gender correct, and their country correct. But sometimes I forget. Axel, welcome. I'm not sure if you've been here before, but welcome. My nephew, his name is Axel. Axel, love that name, Axel. Yeah, it's beautiful. I can, uh, while we wait for Jamie, look at that. Come on, come on, look at that sky. It's, it's beautiful. All right, let's twist that. I'd say it's almost perfect, almost perfect. Yeah, beautiful. All right, um, next question. I thought I saw a question from Mary. Where's Mary's question? No. Uh, Mary says, um, is this correct? I wish you hard luck. No, 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 no. Don't say that. Don't say that. Let's, let's change that to I wish you... I wish you good luck. We can simply say good luck. Good luck, my friend. Good luck. Or I wish you good luck. Or if you want bad things to happen to that person, you could always say, I wish you bad luck. But, but Mary is a very nice person. Mary from Iran. So she would not do that. Uh, Michelle. Um, okay, looking for a good teacher for that. I don't know the, that exam very well. But some of you who are learning English in here, if you know a good teacher. Ah, so Sylvia says, oh Mary, Mary and I uh, spoke uh, through Facebook yesterday. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Mary, your English is very good. It's very good, very good. I'm always impressed with people who learned English on their own and Mary, speaks wonderfully and I'm not sure if she gives herself enough credit I think you know speaking with a native speaker a native English teacher but ah oh, good job Mary good job oh Sylvia you watch the uh, lessons later tomorrow I think tomorrow I have a mega lesson coming out we have the mini lessons and then there is this mega lesson. I put a picture of my notes on the Facebook page. It's about 14 minutes, but I go over maybe six or seven prepositions, how to use them correctly. Um, maybe four or five Latin and Greek roots, which I think are very important in learning English, like geo means earth. And I talk about geology or geography, where graph means writing. And these can be, I teach my own students, native English speakers, I teach them Latin and Greek roots because often when you don't know a word, but you know the Latin and Greek root, it will help you figure out the word, even if you have never seen it before. Look at this, auto means on its own, on its own. So think of automobile. And if you know mobile, mobile means movement. So an automobile basically moves on its own. You have to push the gas. But bio means life. So we talked about graph and writing, bio, life, auto, self. I'm 
biography, a book about somebody's life, auto. Autobiography. They wrote that book about their life on their own. So it can be really helpful learning some of these Latin and Greek roots. And for some of these lessons, I will start including more Latin and Greek roots. Mary, you're welcome. You're welcome. Anna, uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I like uh, doing this. I have the summer off. I'm not in a classroom right now. Well, I haven't been in a classroom since March because of the COVID virus, but uh, it's now officially summer vacation for me. <coughs> Excuse me. Jamie, if you're joining late, she is at the doctor's with my son, but she should be here shortly. She should be here shortly. His appointment was at 1030. He hurt his leg. We can talk about that later if you want uh so i you know just try to help people out with their english all right sylvia whoa um business english Ooh, naima how's it going all right sylvia has a question about business english i'll do my best is there a difference between purchasing and procure, uh, procurement? So if we, um, I'll change that a little bit. Uh, if we want to do the verb there, uh, procuring. If we talk about departments, which is better? Um, purchasing definitely has some money involved that you are Maybe you're purchasing um, a part of a company. If you procure something, that would mean you are, yeah, it definitely could be buying and purchasing, but it's like, it's acquiring more like if, uh, you could procure some land for a business. Um, what are some other things you could procure? Um, they're, they're very, very similar and I'm not a business person, but purchasing seems more about you know, goods and money procuring, like I said, could be land more like acquiring. I hope that helps. I don't know if that is a great answer or not, but if you never use procure, I think you can still use purchase. Purchase can be the only word you use for gaining something for your business. If you're getting money. Veerschloff is here. Veerschloff is here. Czar, how are you? So via Schloff, just ask that question. I'll copy and paste anyway, though. Welcome, Veer Schloff. <clears throat> so he is asking, how has COVID-19 affected my paycheck? And I can't reach that wall. But in the United States, we often knock on wood for good luck. And luckily, the virus has not affected my paycheck one bit. One bit, um, my eyes are watering, sorry. If anything, I have gained a little money because I'm able to work from home. So I haven't had to, tricky tense there, I haven't had to pay for gas to get my to my school. I can simply work from home and I saved money, actually. And my wife, Jamie, if you're joining late, she will be here. She's at the doctor's with my son. He's fine. He just had to get a little um, physical therapy, we would call it. He hurt his, his leg. So uh, my wife has to drive 40 minutes to work. So almost an hour and a half every day. 
and she has been able to save money. So it hasn't affected my work at all. So there are quite a few people in this chat, but no questions. So maybe I'll just keep rambling. Uh, Mary says that in Iran, they knock on wood for good luck. Very nice. We also sometimes cross our fingers for good luck. And that is an emoji, at least in this country. So I can imagine if you don't cross your fingers for good luck, you're probably wondering what, what's that emoji? Why are people, people doing this? But sometimes if we really want good luck, we'll say we're crossing our fingers and our toes. So in that mega lesson that I will release tomorrow, they're actually going to be accurate English subtitles. And I would suggest that you put them on because I have highlighted in all caps, the prepositions that I'm using. And I know prepositions can be very difficult. Axel, so Axel, what country are you from? Axel, my nephew named Axel is from the United States. And my wife, who will be joining shortly, Jamie, is a PE teacher. So, interesting. Maybe you guys can chat about teaching PE. <clears throat> oh, Axel, oh. Bom dia, bom dia. From Brazil. Praia, how are you doing? All right, Mary from Iran has a question. Thank you, Virgil. Ah, Jamie is coming home. So Mary is wondering, I know these two terms, explain and interpret. They're synonyms. They're not actually, they're not synonyms. They're coming home now with my son. Bomzia. Oh, bom, bomjia, bomjia. Um, so explain and interpret. I guess that they could be synonyms, but not quite. I left your um, computer, if you want your computer. Okay. I plugged it up for you. Okay, I shut that off. So explain, you probably know that, right? So you're simply, you have some knowledge and you're trying to give it to somebody else. But interpret, it is a little different. And often with a foreign language, you, when you're interpreting something, you have to make some decisions because you have to change something. So they're very close synonyms, but they're not exactly the same. So if you would like me to explain that further, I can, but uh, I hope that helps. I think I always say that, right? Daniel, I don't think is here right now from Brazil, but he, he noticed that I always say, I hope that helps. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. All right, um, ah, Erroni. And he is actually in business and knows English very well. So thank you for joining, Erroni. Um, bom dia. Bom dia. So Anna, are you also from Brazil? Zar, where are you from? Everything is good here. Zar would like to know. Everything is good here. Oh, Anna, I see your question. Um, <coughs> everything is good here. In fact, today is a big day because my state with the COVID-19 virus, my state yesterday had only nine new cases. And that is the lowest it has been since April. My state, I live in the state of Maine, if you are new here. If you are new, think about subscribing to the channel. We do this live stream four or five times a week and Jamie is about to join us. And there are some questions. I saw Anna's question here. I'll get to that, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. And there is an Axel here actually, oh, from nice. Brazil, from Brazil. Hi, Axel. Let's see, 
There we go. So this is about the uh, fourth or fifth time Jamie has joined. And Jamie is not an English teacher, but she is a PE teacher, like Axel from Brazil. Oh, nice. Go a little, go a little something there on oh. your, your face. And then, um, but she can answer questions about being a mom. Well, I don't know. Did you want to explain? And, and, no, that's good. Uh, okay. You're doing good. Um, questions about teaching. She is a teacher. She teaches 13, 14 year olds, 12 year olds, middle school, uh, PE. Uh, has lived in the American South. Well, and the North. And the North. And just all around pretty smart in a lot of things. Yeah. So while she is getting herself settled, I will, I, I saw, I thought I saw a question from Anna here. How do you get your screen like that? Can I do that or no? Popped out, uh, pop out the chat. Right here? Okay. Some, yep. Those three okay. buttons, yeah. And then you don't have to look at yourself. We can see ourselves right great. here. We can see ourselves right here. Let's see. Uh, get us situated here. All right. Um, what's that? Kind of wind blown. Mm. And Jamie is actually still working. She has a week full of meetings. So she had about an hour and a half. Yep. An hour and a half. Uh, she took our son to the doctor, to the chiropractor. Yep. Everything go all right there. Yeah. He's still a little stiff, but getting better, getting better. The back thing's a little bit of an issue. Uh, yeah, my son has uh, <clears throat> tweaked his his body, his back and his leg. His and hip flexor. His hip flexor. Yeah. Because he's growing so much. And then she has meetings in about an hour, maybe? Mm -hmm. Some yep. or hour and a half, something hour like that? Hour and a half, yeah. All right, so let's, uh, let's find some questions, Le unless you want to talk about anything while mm -hmm. I'm No, I'm good. Finding. Nice to see everybody. Glad to be back. All right. Anna, I'm... Axel, yeah, I, I'm doing online classes as well. I have an Instagram for our school peak um, classes. And then um, I would post videos there each day of workouts I'd want them to do or take pictures of the walks that I was doing to try to get kids engaged in different forms of exercise. Um, so, and it looks like in the fall, I'm going to be doing more in my Google Classroom, which I have to set up for written assignments and um, doing some Zooms as well. Not the best way to do PE, but it seems to be working out okay. All right, so I, I found Anna's question. <clears throat> She's wondering, what's the difference between I like it and I like this? I like this. So I like it is more general. Um, they could ask you, oh, do you like ice cream? Yeah, I like it. I like it. But maybe there is a certain ice cream that somebody has handed you. You can say, oh, I like this. I like this. So when you say this, it's closer to you and it might be a little different from the others. So I like it general. I like this. Maybe it's even in your hand. Maybe you can point to it. But if we would say um, a live stream, you could say, I like doing this. Mm -hmm. But you could also say, I like it. It's, they're very, very close. Very, very close. <clears throat> and bom dia. Bom dia. Bom dia. Is how you say good day in Brazil. Bom dia. And there are quite a few Brazilians in here. Oh, nice. I want to go to Brazil. Oh, man. Brazil. Looks and awesome. Italy. And Italy. To see a Ronnie. No, <clears throat> I can't say it right. I don't even know if I say it right, but a Ronnie. It's the ne at the end that I haven't been saying right, but I think you said you could say Aaron, but oh. I want to try to do it authentic. All right, Luke from Poland is asking, oh man, I, I missed Zara's question. I missed Zara's question. Uh, could you please use some examples for figure it out or figure out? I'm sorry, I was reading. What? Oh, okay. Uh, so to figure something out, it means at first you don't understand, but once you think about it, you are able to figure it out. You are able to complete it. So maybe you have a, well, I think the next question will be about prepositions. So maybe when you first started learning English, prepositions were very tough for you. Come on, they're really tough. Dikshan. How are you from India? 
But maybe after a couple months or a couple years, you have finally figured out prepositions. They are no longer a mystery to you. <coughs> Excuse me. I have allergies. It is not that uh, I have COVID. Allergies. Anything else? Um, figure out? No, I think that's good. Okay. Yeah. And then there was another question about... How are you? Very good, well. How are, how are you? you? You working outside today? Yep. <laughs> we are. <laughs> yep. Uh, Luke from Poland, is it true that the preposition at is aggressive? For example, <laughs> come at me. <laughs> come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. No, it would. At is not necessarily, be careful, you're oh. shaking the camera. Oh, sorry. Um, is not necessarily aggressive. But what you just said there, come at me, bro, or come at me, I added the bro. Come at me? Yes. Yes. But you could say, I'm at school. You know, that's, that's not aggressive. That's just stating something. Uh, fly at me. We don't, I've never heard fly at me. No. But come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. Yeah. Isn't he that, so tough? Yes. Yes, I'm tough. But that would be, uh, that would be, that would be aggressive. Those would, we would call those fighting words. Fighting words. Aggressive. Yeah. Uh, so, Axel, uh, here in the United States. Okay. Oh, can you repeat the question? Oh, Just, so, um, Axel, I don't know how to do your. It's your, okay. okay. Axel says that his kids in PE class put on their uniforms during their video calls. Um, so, in here, used to, when I was in high school, I had a uniform that I got graded if I wore it. I had to wear white, uh, I had to wear sneakers or tennis shoes, I had to wear white socks, couldn't be any other color, and then I had um, shorts and a t-shirt that were given to me by the school, and if I didn't have any of those, I got points taken off my grade. Um, we do grade kids or students um, if they have a uniform, which their uniform is, is just athletic shorts or athletic pants, um, a shirt they didn't wear to school, and they also have to have sneakers in order to participate. Um, and we, we call it habits of work, so that's um, a grade that they get for preparation for class. Um, but it's not, there's no specific thing that they have to buy to participate as long as they have that. Um, and sometimes I didn't see my kids during the meet and sometimes I did. Um, but that's awesome that your kids did change up. We call it changing up. Um, you're changing from your school clothes to your PE clothes. Or some people call it dressing out. Um, so. And Mega. We were talking about crossing your fingers for good luck. Yep. And she said, and she's from India, <clears throat> and she said that this means to be eliminated. Huh. Uh, if somebody's eliminated, which I can imagine it's like a, a cross, maybe mm -hmm. like an X. We do like, Could like do that. the net, yeah, like cut them off, stop, yep. enough. <laughs> cut it They're out. They're dead. Cut it out. Yeah. Um, this is like, if you do this, that's a throat slash, and that has been outlawed in a lot of American sports. You can't do that. Speaking of aggressive, some people think is too aggressive. <clears throat> All right, Axel has another one here. Axel, let me ask you something. I've come across these expressions. To fill a tire, ooh, to pump a tire, to inflate a tire. Maybe they are all right. I don't know. But one of them must be more idiomatic. Which one? Uh, to fill a tire, that's, you're literally filling it with air, so definitely not idiomatic, but it makes sense. If your tire was flat, that's the opposite of a full tire or a pumped up tire. Um, to pump a tire, to inflate. None of those are actually idiomatic. They literally mean what they say. So <clears throat> that thing, we actually have one in the garage yeah. I could probably go grab, but we call that a tire pump. So this action is like literally pumping a tire. So no, none of them are idiomatic. I hope that helps, but it's, it's all true. They mean the same thing. 
That's what can be so frustrating about English is that there are oftentimes three, four, five, six ways to say the same thing. Ah, Zar is from Morocco. So I'm assuming you already speak French and you already speak Arabic. Nice work. Do you see any? Uh, so Yazin, I think I'm saying that right. You little stinker, What? what's that mean? Is she calling me a little stinker? I'm not sure, did you use that before I got here? No, no. Or maybe she's heard it somewhere? Maybe. Um, <clears throat> so little stinker, like we, we use that to describe like little kids if they're kind of doing something naughty or are getting into a little bit of mischief. Well, yeah, we'll say, oh, you little stinker, get out of there. Um, stinker, like you're causing trouble, stink. Um, like we use, we use stink as in it's a bad smell. It stinks in here. Or um, for some reason we use little stinker for causing trouble. I'm not sure. Again, that's a part of the American language that doesn't really make sense. Yeah, and when someone's so, getting in trouble, we ah, oh, don't do that. Yeah. Um, um, I think um va is a northern thing. Did you say that? Um va? No. Um va. I think it's French, actually. Um va, don't do that. But yeah, and a little stinker isn't, uh, it's mischief. Yep. It's not really bad trouble. If we say something is mischief, it's just what little kids might do. Yeah. It's a good one. Yep. But just... She's not calling us little stinkers. She might be calling you a little stinker, but not me. Okay. Not, not me. Not you. And then, um, oh, go ahead. Oh, I got um, Michelle. Oh, oh, Sylvia. Let's read this one right here. I work for a food company. I like food. Work for a food company. <clears throat> we produce powder for pudding and desserts. Also yeast and baking powder. So we didn't stop working for a second since March. We also do over hours. And we, we would call that in the United States, we would call that over t overtime. They might use over hours in um, England, but in American English, we say overtime. So very nice. We would say that you are an essential worker because you work with food. The UPS, oh, the UPS truck is coming by, hello. The UPS truck just came by. Isn't that Aroni's competition? Mm-hmm. Yes. We, do, we, we support DHL, but UPS <laughs> is, oh, is way, more, way more common in the United States. We got FedEx and UPS. It's mostly businesses who use DHL. Like to overnight a lot of things, like important documents. Oh, and I, I think I was saying essential worker. Yeah. Essential means necessary, essential, essential. Yeah, I, and <clears throat> I'm not sure who asked that. Um, uh, Sylvia was just saying that she works in the oh, food. Oh, Sylvia, food. we really appreciate that because we, for a while, I couldn't find any flour. Yeast was really hard to come by. Um, baking soda and baking powder because I think everybody was baking a lot during our lockdown. Um, so I had a terrible time trying to find all of those types of ingredients. So thank you very much. Appreciate your hard work. And I believe Sylvia, I think Sylvia is from Hungary. I believe Hungary. Nice. So Michelle is wondering what's the difference between turn on and to switch on? Um, really? Not too much. Like you turn on the light, but you turn the light on using a light switch. So a switch just kind of goes up and down. Um, we don't really say switch on the light. We say, can you turn on the light? Um, but if someone said switch on the light. Oh yeah, we, I would we, know we, what that would mean. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, the switch is the light switch on the wall. Yeah. Um, and we also say, can you switch it up? Like, um, like if you're doing the same thing over and over, you might want to, what you're doing for dinner, say you eat the same dinner three nights in a row. We might say, hey, can we switch it up tonight and do something different than the pizza we've had for three nights in a row? Um, we also call somebody that can um, hit both ways or use both of their hands to swing right and left. We say they're a switch up hitter. For baseball. For baseball. Um, I wonder if cricket, Deekshanch is from hmm. India. I wonder, cricket, are you a left-handed hitter? And a right-handed hitter, we, we call that uh, switching it up, switching it up. <clears throat> yeah, but um, 
Yeah. Switch up. That's a good point. Switch, yeah. switch to change mostly. Uh, let's see. We might be a little bit behind yeah, in some of these I'm, questions. Yeah, because I don't know where you are. Sorry. Sorry. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to the most current questions at the bottom. If we missed your questions, ask them again. Yes, please. Sorry, we didn't we didn't skip them on purpose. Yeah. Um. So, I'm, I just see uh, is it Dikshan? Yeah, Dikshan from India. Yeah, he has one. Um, I have heard healthcare. Sorry, our mail postman's coming. It's a busy day here in the neighborhood. <laughs> Um, I have heard healthcare is extremely expensive in the United States. Is that true? Um, and that's very true. Um, it's unfortunate that it's so expensive. Um, there's a big debate now on how expensive medicine is, um, especially um, for diabetics, their shots that they have, or if you have a really bad allergy and you have what we call an EpiPen, that if you're having an allergic reaction, you can just stick in your leg and that will help. Those are like $500 and there's that, they're just, they don't, they cost, um, like maybe $50 to make. So the profit that these companies are making off medicine is horrendous. Now, Britt and I are both teachers, so our healthcare is really relatively inexpensive because we have such a large group of employees purchasing the same um, insurance. So that also makes our cost go down. Also within our company or with our school district, the less people use their insurance, the less expensive and it costs for the members to buy. Um, so there's kind of like a, a solution or not a solution or a, what do you call it? Like a- uh, Competitive. Uh, well, it is competitive, but they have like a, a formula that, formula that mm. they use to determine how much our insurance would cost. Right now, um, I in my school district, I only pay 20% of my insurance, but I'm actually on Brent's insurance because his school district pays more of his insurance, so. Yeah, very, very complicated, but um, it, it is for some people, like they can lose all of their money because they get sick. For us, the if you have a good paying job that often requires a college degree, you're a little bit better off. Yeah. And, working, and definitely working for a bigger mm. company, you're gonna have better insurance because it's a larger group to purchase it. If you have to purchase your own insurance, like if you're self-employed, that is just astronomical. Uh, Yasin is from uh, northern Iraq. So I wonder if Kurdistan, Kurdistan, welcome. Let's see. <clears throat> Deep change. Oh, and, and Jamie has joined a few times before and some people like it because she talks very quickly and really mm. challenges your you know, your English ability. So that's, she definitely speaks more like a native would speak. And I speak more of a little bit. I forget to do that. No, but I, I, some people yeah. have said they, yeah. they like yeah. that. So, yeah. So if you look, um, Doris, hi Doris. Mm. I don't think I've seen you before. Doris, do you see her question? I do. She says, hey, a girl can say, hey dude. I think this was a man thing. I think you mean to say, I thought this was a man thing. Nope, women here in the net, like I'll, I often say that to my son. I'll say, hey dude, what's up? Or hey guy, how you doing? Um, we just refer to guys as dudes. Um, some, some even teenagers will be like, dude, what are you doing? And they're actually talking to a girl. Um, we also use, hey guys, or guys come here. That's just a group of everybody. It can be both girls and boys. Um, some females don't like that, um, but I do, hey guys. I used to say, hey y'all, come over here, because I'm from the South and y'all is like for everybody to come. But I got made fun of a lot when I moved here, so I switched up to hey guys, or hey everyone. Um, but some people find that sexist too, because why wouldn't you say, hey girls, come over, instead of hey guys. So I try to do, <coughs> hey everyone. Some of my teachers say, friends, can you come over here? That's a little elementary for me, so. I just try to do, can everybody listen up? Or, hey everyone, I need your attention. But girls can say, hey dude, to a guy. And um, Rod is here. Thank you so much for adding the Brazilian Portuguese mm. subtitles. And Deke Chanch is here. Thank you so much for adding the Hindi subtitles. And Mary, if she's still here, she added Persian subtitles. So awesome. And of course, Arone added uh, Italian subtitles to 
many videos. Someone is adding Indonesian subtitles. I don't know who it is. I don't know if Henry is in here, but I, I want to ask Henry, is it you? I know Henry is from Indonesia. Uh, and Deekchant says he's right-handed. I'm left-handed. I'm right-handed. Jamie's right-handed. And my son is left-handed, but he writes right-handed. He does, sorry, he's right-handed, but he like swings a bat, he does hockey, he does everything else for sports left-handed, but he writes with his right hand. And my daughter's left-handed. Yes. <clears throat> um, our daughter, our daughter, right? I should say that, our daughter. Do you um, see Nikita's question? The What's the oh, meaning of goody two-shoes? Goody two-shoes, that's a great question. So goody two-shoes is like somebody that follows the rules, doesn't waver to even be a little bit naughty or do something bad. Sometimes we call them a kiss up because they try to like kiss up to the teacher, like say, oh, you're so beautiful today. Or, oh, I like what you're wearing today. Or I really like the lesson you taught today. Um, a goody two-shoes just doesn't break the rules at all. Like they're just, they're so good. Um, and two-shoes I think comes from because we have two feet. And you would never call a goody two-shoes a little stinker. No. Going back no. to a little stinker. Nope. Uh, oh, so Axel is wondering which states, which states are we from? Or what state are you two from? I may have skipped the information. I, I don't know if I said it. Um, and he, he's going to guess that one of the southern states. <laughs> so. Oh, is he guessing or is she talking? Yeah, he's wondering oh. if, yeah, no, no, he's, he's saying it's one of the southern states. Oh, yeah. I, so should I tell, oh. Sure, sure. I'm from Alabama. Right, which southern is state. definitely a southern yeah. state. Um, this flag right here is the state of Alabama. We both graduated college in Alabama. Jamie grew up in Alabama, but I grew up in Maine, which is the northernmost state you can get yeah. in the, in the corner, besides Alaska. But uh, we're not far from Boston about a two hour car drive from Boston. So we definitely live in the North now, but if you're guessing the South, yeah. it's, you're, you're not far off. Um, did you see Rod's question? No. He, Rod is, did you see it? No, Should I just I saw uh, Erroni. Oh, said roll, roll Tide, tide. Erroni, that's and right. Michelle is offering to put Arab, um, yeah, Arabic subtitles. That'd be wow. awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Rod is saying, I wonder, I, am, I was wondering what it means to the sixes and sevens. Is that an old idiom? I have to be honest, Rod, I've never heard that. I'm not even, I'm not sure. No, I, it maybe is British. And it's maybe a little older, but mm. I can say with certainty that it's not American. Mm -hmm. It might be, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna go to the 666, but I don't know if that, I I've never heard it used it. with that. <clears throat> um, do you see Deke Shan's, uh, oh, it just bumped. No. Uh, Deke Shan's question? No. Oh. Yeah, Deke Shan was wondering, do you use, use? And so, um, sometimes it, we, I don't, and I've never heard him say it, but no. some people, uh, I think in Boston, will say use guys or in New York. Yes, it's the yeah. New York, New Jersey yeah. dialect. Yes. Are you, what do you get? Well, I can't even say it because I don't use it. Right. You get, I can't. You use, have to, yeah, use, use guys, guys. Use guys. Yeah. That, and that's the problem with English. I know with the Romance languages, you have a completely different pronoun for plural you we don't have that so in the south they say y'all up here we would say you guys new york new jersey use guys use guys it's hard to say it with a straight face yeah 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 um so osma's questions is right under that oh, right under that okay. osma says she wants to know what it means to reach out buck wild I, I'm not sure what that H word. I don't know. Hepatitis? Hepatitis. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and shoplifter is. All right. Let's do it. All right. I'll do, you can do reach out. Okay. Uh, reach out is, uh, I'll type it right down here. Try not to shake the camera too much. A reach out means to offer help. Yep. 
Um, or you could reach out to someone if like by phone or by text if they're not feeling well, if they've had surgery or you're concerned about them or um, if you if you have some you have if you need some information about something you might say I'm gonna reach out to Brent because I need to learn how to speak English. Um, so that's reaching out. Buck Wild is like we use that a lot and I know in the south yeah. but Buck Wild means you were just going crazy at like crazy at a party um, you're just over the top going crazy buck wild like how a um uh is it a, ho well, a horse box and so does a bull like they buck um so you're kind of bucking the system like you're going against what everybody else is doing um does that yeah. make sense yeah buck wild yeah okay. and when a horse bucks it's their back two feet jump up we call that bucking um I don't know what the H word is. Hepatitis? I don't either. That's, um, you can get hepatitis, I think A and hepatitis C and B. Yeah. There's different strains of hepatitis. Is it a blood disease? It is. I think it is in your blood. One is, um, I believe a sexually transmitted disease, hepatitis. One, or maybe one's an, um, I know one is related to alcoholism, drinking too much alcohol. Um, but it's also, um, I think very contagious if you touch I'm not sure. Look it up. I'm and, sure. uh, and a shoplifter is someone who steals. Mm -hmm. Jamie used to be a real big <laughs> shoplifter. So no, just, just yeah. kidding. JK, just kidding. Sometimes we say that JK, just kidding. JK, JK. Do you uh, see uh, <clears throat> Anna Claudia's? I did not. What is that? Um, how can I say something like, maybe you don't know, but is there an expression for that? I think that's good sometimes to say, I'm not sure if you know this, but, um, so that's very, you, you can use that. Or you can say, I'm not sure if you're aware, but. Um. Yeah, and you might say that when you don't want to sound like too bossy, like too much of a know-it-all. You might say, ah, I know, I'm not sure if you know this, but, especially to your boss, you yeah. might want to say that to be a little bit more respectful. I'm not sure if you noticed, but Joey keeps coming into work late every day. Joey, I don't know if you noticed that. Hmm. I don't know if you noticed this, but Jamie just stuck some clothing into her pockets. She was shoplifting. Oh my God. I, she, Is he really going to think I shoplift? No, she didn't. Or new she, people that come here. She didn't. She didn't shoplift. <laughs> Just kidding. JK, JK. Uh, it kind of bumped again. Yeah, the boomers, the boomers in us. Um, if I, okay. Uh, I'll take, a, a, we got asthma right here. Yeah. Boggles the mind. Yep, that's what I was looking oh, for. Okay. Yep. Boggles the mind. That means it's either really amazing, you can't believe it, or you can't figure it out. So, one could say the amount of stars in the sky boggles my mind. I just, I can't even fathom. That's a big word. Can't even think about it. Yep. Boggles. Uh, so the next one comes from, looks like, is it Miho? My Miho. Home? Miho. Yes, Miho. Yeah. Do you see your question no. or his question? I'm sorry, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen you before, so hello. Um, they are wondering... Um, what's the difference between dinner and supper? Oh. Dinner sounds like a gorgeous meal and supper sounds like a simple. What do you use in everyday life? Um, I think we say dinner. Mm -hmm. And dinner yes. is more formal. Yeah. Like if you're going um, to dinner with another couple out to dinner, we would say that. We don't say go out for supper. Supper is... I know in the South we did use supper more oh, than you? dinner, yes. Oh, okay, I thought that was a Northern thing. No. So we do use supper, but like Jamie said, it's mostly at home. But we could, what are we having for dinner tonight? I yeah, hate that can... question. I hate it. I what? hate it. What are we having for supper tonight? Ugh, I hate it. So. It never fails. Nobody wants mm. the same thing. Nobody feels like cooking. It's just, oh, I hate that question. If I ever win a lot of money, that's one person I'm going to hire, somebody to cook for us. I hate making dinner. All right. I might be skipping around a little bit. Yep. <coughs> I'm sorry. But Axel says Alabama, mm. the state where my favorite book was written, my favorite book as well, To Kill a Mockingbird. 
Yeah, it's amazing. I love To Kill a Mockingbird. The first couple chapters are pretty boring. Yeah. I don't know why Harper Lee would begin a book like that, but once you hit chapter three, very good book. Nicely done. I agree. Um, I saw earlier here, Erroni. Well, Zabeda didn't get the notification. Oh. That's awful, Zabeda, sorry. Oh, Henry said he's fixing to go to bed. See you, Henry. Henry, mm -hmm. Henry, Indonesia, Indonesia. Are you are you adding the Indonesian subtitles? Because when somebody adds subtitles, it's great. Anyone who would like to add subtitles, thank you so much. Um, if it helps your English, you know that would be great. I never get a notification when there are new subtitles, and I don't know who did it. Some people like Rod finished some today. And he sent me a message, so thank you, Rod. If you're still here, I know you're busy. Wee's here. What's up, Wee? Um, Axel said, would you mind if I share this live video's link in my profile? It's being high quality. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, something I'd like to talk about really briefly, but I think a lot of people who don't live in the United States have a similar question to Aroni. And that is, if you're homeless, will you be able to have surgery? Let's say you have no money and you show up at the hospital, will you be treated? And yes, you will be treated. That's one of the reasons why our healthcare is so expensive because everyone gets treated. Even if you have no money, show up at the hospital, the doctors have taken what is called a Hippocratic Oath. I'm not sure if that is uh, around the world, but in the United States, they take the Hippocratic Oath, meaning whoever is in need of help, I will help them. So it's, a, it's an oath. It's just a strong bond. It's a, it's a strong belief that they have, but other, it has to be paid for right. somehow. And we also, a lot of people that are lower income or, um, so there's, there's Medicaid and Medicare. So Medicaid is for people of low income. Um, the state pays for that, the government help pays for that. Um, and one thing that also makes insurance a little higher, and those because but those people on Medicaid often go to the emergency room versus going to an urgent care or to their doctor to be seen. And if you go to the emergency room for like a little fever, um, that's so expensive. So that also boosts up the um, cost care. So like we try not to go to the emergency room if we can help it because it is expensive, our copay. Um, but then our country also has Medicare and that's for uh, people 65 and over. Um, we pay into that right now and we you, anytime you have a job in the United States you pay into Medicare so that when you're 65 you have health insurance. Um, so those are also two benefits to our American health care system. Uh, Zoe has uh, two questions. Uh, Jamie, how do you let Brent keep his beard growing? I just asked him this morning. I was like, what's this? Like, De I Blame Deke Chanch. He said to grow the beard, yeah. so I have. He usually, like in the winter, it's, it's, uh, he grows it out. Um, he grew it out, I don't know, when did you grow, you just recently grew it out a lot, oh, uh, during No Shave November. Right, and when I started this channel, I had a beard yeah. back in like January. Yeah, but. Um, I really, it's, I mean, it doesn't bother me. Like I don't, I, uh, <laughs> I just, I don't, I think he's handsome either way. I think he looks younger without the beard. Yeah. Um, so. Thank you. Yeah. And the, uh, the next question is also from Zoe. What's the difference between pebble, rock, and stone? So right off the bat, a pebble is going to be smaller. I saw you looking around yeah. for rocks. Um, Go ahead, you explain Okay, that. so a pebble is definitely different because it's smaller, pebble, but a rock and a stone, there's no real difference. I think we would use rock more often. You might say a statue is made from stone. It's a little bigger, but you can also use small rocks, uh, uh, stone. You can call those stones. But in the United States, rock is more common than stone. And, 
England, it might be stone more common. So, ah. so we have three. I have three things. So this is a stone. It's a little bit bigger. And decorative, right? Yeah. You, you, well, it could be decorative. These are like really flat and soft. Um, we have these stones by our gutter. Um, it helps um, for the water not to puddle up for some reason. It also holds moisture in the ground for our big plants that we have. This is a rock. So rocks are a little bit more sharp. Not as little as a, stone, a pebble, but not as big as a stone. And then these pebbles are super, super tiny. So like that's a little pebble. Sometimes they're even much smaller than that. And they are, well, I can't, I was going to say a swear, but they um, really hurt to step on. Like if, I, cause I go barefoot a lot around here. Um, cause that's what we do in the South. If you remember from one of our videos, videos, grocery store feet. Um, so those are, so stone, rock and pebble. Oh, you can't see it, pebble. I actually have to go move the water too. Oh, okay. Uh, Deke Shanch uh, really says, uh, uh, quickly says he's going to read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That was, that. so that is going to be some high level English. Nice job. But it was written, you know, what, almost 200 years ago? So it is, it is difficult for native English speakers to read as well. James, I may be a little bit further back, but I see uh, your question here. We're talking about phones and cards what does it mean to recharge we don't we don't say top up so i'll just talk about the recharge and re anytime you see re in english it means again so if you are going to we wouldn't say recharge a phone we would just say we're I'm, i need to charge my phone my battery is low but a card do i oh i do have my wallet I do have my wallet and I have no, oh, I do have some money. Oh, I have seven, eight. I have eight American dollars. So if I was flexing, if I was, if I was showing off. You would, you would not flex with seven dollars. No, not with seven dollars. But let's say, and I don't eat, I don't drink uh, Starbucks very often, oh. but I, one of my students gave me this for Christmas, I believe. Oh, we didn't get end of the year gifts from our students either. No. We missed out on that. Curse you, coronavirus. <laughs> but to recharge your card, you could do that for this card. And this is, we call this a gift card. And one of my students gave me a gift card, had $5 on it. But if I wanted to recharge it, Let's say I spent almost all of my $5. I could say to the cashier, the person taking the money, the cashier, I could say, could I recharge this? I want to put 10 more dollars on it. So that's what we would say is recharge. It had five. I spent it, recharge it, put more on, put more on. So Mary McCain, I've seen her. I think she's asked this twice. So I want oh, to make sure that we sorry, answer Mary. Mary. Um, if you can find it, uh, she says, turn the dome of rock into something. Does that make any sense? Please explain. And I haven't heard that before, Mary. I'm sorry. I don't, we don't use that expression. Right. Rod has to go back to work. Sorry, my man. Michelle is wondering, have I heard or have we heard about the book, Life is What You Make It? Mm -mm. Have you... I have not heard about that book. No. But life is what you make it. Yeah. Um, man, there was another question. Well, I'm gonna answer Rod's really quickly because he's about to leave. He says in the song one plus one, Beyonce chops off the R in algebra. Algebra? I, is it okay to say algebra? So, um, algebra. No, we, we don't say that. And I haven't heard that song. So I'm going to have to listen to that. Cause I do like Beyonce a lot. Um, but I've never heard anybody where we live say, say it without the R. Um, the, the Boston accent though, we talked algebra. about the Boston accent and they will often leave off R's. In fact, some people in Maine leave off, like they'll say pack instead of park car. They might say ca, so I pack the ca. 
they leave off the R's, but Beyonce's from New York, isn't yeah. she? Mm. Our son has actually picked up his accent a little bit here. It's kind of it's kind of interesting to hear. So Doris, I believe she is new. Thank you for joining. If you are new, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel. She asks, I don't know this word. Be abled? By abled. By abled. I do not know that word. By abled. But. I think, uh, no. Henry. It's I just, blabbled. Blabbled? Yes. Oh. Okay. Blabble, like, Blabbled. Uh, okay, with two Bs, I yeah. think, right? Okay. Um, Henry, thank you. Busted, he said. Busted. Henry has been adding the Indonesian subtitles. Thank oh, you. Thanks, Henry. Thank you so much. I think you've added at least three videos. I will make a playlist with Indonesian subtitles. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Babble. Oh, babbled. I'm sorry, Doris. Bab. Blab. Blabbed. He blabbed it out. Okay. Is that how you spell blabbed? Yes. Yeah, Maybe. Okay. Did you want to take that one? So, Sorry, Doris. Like, if somebody's blabbling, um, they're just talking constantly for really no reason. Like, they're not making any sense. They're just talking to hear themselves talk. Um, if someone has a secret and you've asked them not to tell it, and that person tells the secret, you'll say, gosh, she blabbed it out. Um, or she blabbed out the secret. It just means you talk. You're just blabbing and you're... It's not a great term for people that they're what they're doing. It's not, you know, if you're blabbing, it's not super nice. Or somebody that's talking a long time and like, you know how when you're trying to leave to go home and people just keep talking and talking? We would say she just blabbed, blab, blabbed. Um, um, if you've ever watched Seinfeld, there's a really, really, really funny episode about the word blah. Um, and so they would say, um, no, it's not blah. No, it's not. It's yada, yada, yada. yada. yada yeah. That's great. So that's, you know. Um, but you could talk about if someone is just talking, we might say that blah, 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 blah. Or if you're telling a story, you might tell the important part of the story first. And then you might be like, and then blah, blah, blah. And then we went to the amusement park. Like if you're skipping over stuff that's not super important, you might would say that too. All right. Henry in Indonesia has to go to bed. But thank you so much. Good night, Henry. Uh uh, Zabeda has a question about what's the difference between statue and sculpture? Hmm. Do you... Oh, well, like a statue is usually like kind of like um, somebody that's important here. Like we have the Statue of Liberty. Um, sometimes, well, now in the United States, there a lot of them are coming down, but we have a lot of statues of Confederate soldiers from the South that they would um, put up, but now they're coming down due to everything that's going on in America, as they should come down. Um, with Like Mar like in, in uh, Washington, D.C., we have a lot of statues there. Um, Martin Luther King has a huge statue. It's beautiful. Um, Lincoln Memorial, um, Abraham Lincoln is there. That's beautiful. We love to go there. So there's a lot, of, and they're really, statues are usually really, really big and just glorious to look at. Um, and, and, I would, and I would say sculptures are more artwork. Sculpture. It had to have been made by hand, mm -hmm. more, more or less. So if we had to separate the two, statue, like Jamie said, they're usually memorials. They're usually recognizing a famous figure in history. Mm -hmm. And a sculpture is mostly art you would find in a museum, or it's meant to be beautiful. Something right. like that. So do you see Nikita's question? No. Nikita is wondering, what's a cobblestone? Ooh, hmm. that's a good question. That is a good question. Uh, I, I could show you one. Mm. In Portland, there are some cobblestone streets. So cobblestone, so now we have uh, the technology in our roads. Like that. To make it like tar, we would call smooth. it smooth, hot top, you know, that kind of thing. Cobblestone was how the roads were made mostly before there were cars. So it's putting stones. Mm -hmm. Like, like Jamie the size said, of a brick stone. 
flat. Ah, ah, she's gonna go. She's gonna go. <laughs> nice. And so a cobblestones <coughs> can be uh, difficult to walk on. So they're not the preferred type of road, but a lot of cities keep them because they are old looking. Yeah, that you might have a road. Thanks, Jamie. Mm -hmm. You might have a road made of these sunk into the ground. And so if your car goes over it, there will be a little rattling. So, yeah, nice. Paperweight, paperweight. Mm -hmm. Sharef says, I suggest if you can do a video of words who improve better our writing, like fulfillment, etc. Thanks, teacher. There you go. Yeah, I have been, I did um, a video for words to make you sound smarter, but I think we need some more words like fulfill. The one I came up with yesterday, I was like, I need to put that in a video. I can't remember it right now, but thank you, Sharef. And I know Rod may not be here uh. anymore, but Rod is going back to the card and the, um, what you were talking like about recharge, recharge. recharge maybe it means to buy minutes to a prepaid phone would it work yes a lot of people that have um prepaid phones they buy minutes and we do say that like if my i need my phone is out of minutes i need to go buy some minutes so i can use my phone so that would work and i just repeated james's question he he was asking for clarification about that and i think jamie just answered that oh. so Oh, no, thank yeah. you. For uh, prepaid, so let's, let's talk about that for a second. <clears throat> so if we have a phone and we pay each month, we have that. We pay each month unlimited minutes. I'm using my data plan right now with my phone unlimited. Some people have what Jamie said is a prepaid phone and prepaid Notice that pre there, pre means before. So they have to pay for the minutes before they use them. And when they run out, they have no more. They would have to recharge that phone, re, again, put more money on it. And I wanna talk about burner phone mm, for a second, yeah. burner phone. Yeah, that's let's say that I was cheating on Jamie. I would never do that. Unless I'm a shoplifter. Ooh, that's right, that's <laughs> right. So some people have burner phones where they maybe are dealing drugs or they're cheating on their wife or something, but they have a phone, prepaid phone, a different phone number so they can get calls in secret. Burner phone. And if the police are catching on to what they're doing, they just chuck the phone, chuck, we've talked about that before, chuck or throw the phone, maybe into a river, mm -hmm. so nobody sees it, burner phone. You might hear that in TV shows, movies, drug dealers have a burner phone. Yep, yep. Um, do you see K Mega's question? I haven't seen that person before, so hi oh, K. Mega, K Mega. K -Mega. Mega, uh, India. Oh, India. nice. But nice she you. does not speak Hindi. Huh. And I never, I never, that's not her native language. She says, do you see her question? No. Sir, when someone is wearing a frock, is it right to say she's on frock? We don't say that. I don't even know what a frock is. It might be like a smock. We call it like a, like a big shawl, a big smock to keep you warm. We do say if someone's wearing a really snazzy or a great outfit, we do say that outfits on fleek. So I'm not sure if maybe those are confused, if you've heard that before. Um, or uh, yeah, anything that's on point, the younger generation is now saying that's on fleek. I have no idea where that came from. So I just looked up frock and apparently it's something dressy. Oh yeah. But we would not say on frock, yeah. on frock. Like Jamie said, if they look good, we might say they are on fleek. I'll write that in the, the chat, but yeah, not on frock. On fleek. Okay. Oh, Zabeda says that you make her laugh. Oh. <laughs> She's helping a lot. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Zabeda. <clears throat> I try. 
Doris is, so Doris is asking, is it right to say recharge my battery? I need juice. Yes, we often call electricity juice. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if somebody, if you say, I need to recharge my battery, somebody would automatically <coughs> think that you are tired. Mm. I need to recharge my battery. Meaning you are tired, you need to rest. Zabeda so says, who's taking them down and why? You can skip this. I know you don't like to talk about politics on here. Uh, it's really not, I mean, it is a, it, well, it's sort of, kind of. So in the South, um, you know, a long time ago, there was a lot of racial tension and there still is. I mean, you, you've all seen it in America. I mean, it's everywhere. Um, but down South, it was a little bit more prominent. Um, and so those statues really kind of represent a hatred of a race, um, of people who were against African-Americans. Um, while they did some good things for the South, um, they didn't do a lot of good things except for white people. So um, the South just really doesn't want that to be a representation of them anymore. While some people would still like them to be up because it is a part of history that's part of our American history. Um, those people just um, didn't represent a lot of kindness to other races other than the white race. So I, I agree with them being taken down. Um, I, I, would not, I wouldn't want anybody to feel uncomfortable in my home if I had something up like that. Um, so that's why they're being taken down. Yeah, we have uh, a very complicated history when it comes to race. And as you can see, we are two white people and so we're probably not the best to talk mm -hmm. about racism because we don't see it as much as someone who is, is black or brown. But we do teach students who are black and brown and we hear their stories and you know, we believe them that there is still a lot of racism in the United States. We, we call it systematic racism, maybe not the right time to talk about it, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really complicated and mm -hmm. it's been unfair for so long. So after World War II, all right, when people were buying houses, that is mostly how our, uh, what we call the suburbs were set up. Our cities outside of the city were set up. If you were black, you could not get a loan for your house. It's only white people. So, and I know that is 75 years ago, but it still affects later generations today. So it's pretty complicated. Uh, hopefully things will change. We've come but, a long, I mean, we have come a long way, but in some aspects we haven't come a long way. Yeah. Um, and usually the family that you're born in, you start believing what your family believes instead of being given a chance to really you think for yourself. Um, so that's how it kind of is embedded in families. Um, we really try to let our kids think a different way and, and for their self. Um, but a lot of families sometimes tend not to do that, which is unfortunate. All right, Andrew says the, uh, the shoplifting and <laughs> cheater I jokes are not working at all. Noted, Andrew, noted. My fault. Yeah. My fault. Corning. Dad jokes. Uh, uh, Marina. Yeah, dad jokes. Uh, Marina is asking about uh, Gone with the Wind. Is that banned? We just listened to a podcast on this. Right. Yeah. So I believe Amazon has... HBO. Oh, HBO? Yep. Has taken it off their streaming service. So you can't stream it on HBO. But the United States believes in the freedom of speech. So a lot of things are not banned. And a lot of people say we shouldn't forget about that history. So if you want to rent the movie, um, A Gone with the Wind, you can. It's just, it was taken off one streaming. One streaming. So um, Axel says, fun fact about racism. In Portuguese, the N word is polite but black is mildly offensive. Wow. So I know that in some foreign language, black is um, spelled N-E-G-R-O. Like that's how you say the word black. 
Um, the N word is highly offensive here. Highly. Like you can, you, if you own a business and you use that, you're done. Um, we actually just had a conversation this morning about To Kill a Mockingbird in one of my um, teacher meetings. Um, we were thinking about in the fall, if we're remote, why can't we get subscriptions for our kids to listen to audiobooks online, like To Kill a Mockingbird? And we are not able um, to make our kids listen to To Kill a Mockingbird on an audio version because they use the N word so much in that book. Um, the school district that I work for is uh, employed hugely by white teachers, and we're trying to get away from that. Um, but Maine is a really white state. Um, so I found that really interesting that um, a really great book um, is now not, our kids can read it. Um, but like as a teacher, if I read that book out loud to my class, I cannot say the N word. Um, we just say, they say the N word and then we move on. Um, a white person should never say that at all, ever, ever. Um, I just, oh, Song of Silence, um, yeah, by Simon and Garfunkel. I love Simon and Garfunkel, one of my favorite groups. I think Paul Simon is a, is a poet. Good stuff there. Um, Nikita, do you see your question? School buses, right? Is that the mm -hmm. one? Yep. Why are they yellow? I think they're yellow because it's a bright color and you want people to see that bus coming to be safe. And um, I would imagine in the north it's yellow if you have like a whiteout or bad weather conditions. That's a bright color that you can see. I'm not really sure. It might go, you might want to Google that to get the right answer. But I'm, I believe that they're white so, you know, they're, people won't, don't run into them. or Because um, believe it or not, some people, if they're on their phones, people have gone right under a school bus. All right. Marina is wondering um, if people are black. Um, is Afro or African American? We might say that yeah. African American. Is that politically correct? Yeah, she mm -hmm. used politically correct. Nice job. Yeah. Is that politically correct? Some other variants. Um, yeah. So for you know white people, but um, we do we in the United States it is perfectly acceptable to say white, black, brown people. Um, we also say people of color. People of color. So it's, it's unfortunate. Some people, um, it's just, if you introduce a word, probably the same in every language. For example, a hundred years ago, if someone could not speak, they were called dumb. If you couldn't speak, it's been changed to mute. But once that word is used in such a bad way, we have to change it. So African American, European American, Asian American, Latino American, Hispanic American. Ideally, if you know the country that person was originally from, or how about just American, just American. But um, sometimes people have um, the like, deep belief, like I am Irish American, I am English American, I am Scottish American. Unfortunately, if you are black in this country, it's likely your ancestors were brought here because of slavery and you don't know what country or part of the world your family was originally from. So that's why the whole continent, African American. Oh, Roni, do you see this question? No. For both of you? Okay. For both of you, did you ever assist to a racial moment fact when you were in Alabama? It's a great question, Ramoni. Uh, I do want to speak up for Alabama, though, yeah. first. Is that, yes, a lot of racism in Alabama, but Maine also has a lot of racism. Mm. A lot of racism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, a lot of my former students are African-American students. I On Facebook, I'm friends with a lot of them. Um, it's it's great to see them grow up one of i think we've talked about this before we went to an african-american thanksgiving um mm. it was a, it was awesome um i've never really had to assist with a racial moment myself um 
I'll be honest about my family. My it's, it's mainly my grandparents. Um, on my dad's side, were I, they were racist, and it bothered me. And I I did speak up with them, like say, hey, you know, maybe you shouldn't use the N word or. Um, also, another negative word uh, to deal with someone that's black or brown is to call them colored. Um, we don't say that either. Um, you know, that's another one of those words that in the 50s, that was the term to use, mm -hmm. but it became used in such a bad way, we have to change it. Yeah. But of course, if you say colored, then that means white is the, the right one. Mm -hmm. So there, there are many reasons why in English we don't say that. That's no. just, that's just wrong. Well, that's just to how they would identify the white bathroom and the colored bathroom. Yeah. Um, they would do that. Um, so I, I did have some uncomfortable moments with my grandparents because I didn't believe the same way as them. Um, and they, I, they were not happy that I did not feel the same way as them, but that's really the only kind of racial, um, tension that I've ever had. Um, I have dealt in Maine um, with, uh, I had a white student who allowed herself to be filmed singing um, a song that used the N-word and she actually said the N-word and then it got posted everywhere on social media. Um, and that caused a lot of tension between a lot of my students. So a lot of us as teachers were having to put out fires um, and I haven't talked about to kind of squash it. We did talk about it, but if they kept talking about it people kept getting mad at each other. That student unfortunately ended up moving to a different school because it got so bad for her. Um, and so that's that's something that I've dealt with here in Maine. Um, so, have you? Was that, uh, yes, I have, yeah. I have, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there, like I said, there is a, a lot of racism mm -hmm. in this country, unfortunately. Uh, like Jamie said, it's getting better, but we've been saying that forever it's getting better it's getting better but yeah, things need to change for sure um so axel is asking is there an easy way whoops I, I did it twice is there an easy way to memorize the english system oh this is too long uh inches miles no there isn't and that's the problem that's why so many other countries even England has gotten rid of the English system because it's not as easy as centimeter, meter. No, there's no easy way. Sorry. And I think we're one of the only countries that actually use it. I can't convert inches to feet. Like I, I, it's hard for me to do that. I think there's 12 inches in a foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also like pounds, like I know 16 ounces is a pound but I don't know how many cups equals 16 ounces. I have to always Google it. Yeah, it's awful. Uh, what's the, oh, so uh, Anna has some questions about phrasal verbs. What's the difference between put in and then put on? Put in and put on. So you can put on your clothing, but you might put water into a bowl. So, it's, it's a lot like the, the actual prepositions. So in, put in, it's usually into a container, inside, and then put on, usually on, on the You put the on outside. your clothes, yeah. Yeah. Put on lotion. Oh, yeah. Put on my sunglasses. Put on his hat. Did you hold one for a review? Was I didn't, no. Okay. Oh, oh, uh, Veerslav, um, yeah. Is the, is the KKK movement still alive? I do believe, yeah. It's, we would call it underground. Underground, so not literally under the ground, but very secretive. On a low down. Yeah, so I do think it's probably still small, but I do believe there are some members of the KKK around. You don't see them like marching. When I was younger, um, yeah, they, because they, they're right, free right to speech, um, or freedom of speech. And you, they would sometimes show up at the court, but it wasn't like the masses you saw in the fifties. And then even that started slowly, um, 
just disintegrating or they stop coming out in public. So you don't see that. Um, now it's more of like uh, you got your big truck, you got your big guns with you, your camo on. Um, Confederate flag. Confederate flag. That's like, made the news. Yeah. Um, so that's not that we not. I'm not saying that that represents the KKK, but that's more. It's more gone towards that kind of aspect. Um, James is wondering what is the typical breakfast for people in the United States. <laughs> that's so funny you asked that, James, because I was spoiled this morning with my favorite breakfast. Um, and just prepare yourself, Aroni. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody from Italy, just prepare yourself. So this is not a typical right breakfast. Back. Yeah, sure. sure. Um, because it takes a while to make, and uh, it's I, I can't I can't make it at home because it's very difficult. But Brent went and got me a breakfast pizza um, today. It was only seven bucks. It was a great deal because usually to get one slice of self serve is like two dollars and thirty eight cents. So the whole pizza was seven bucks, and it was loaded with sausage and bacon and egg and cheese on it so it's delicious like you can only eat one piece and you're kind of full um oh he actually went to grab it um and the crust was so soft it's just it was so good and so cheap like we were like wow that's it'll last us a few meals so um so here we have look at this it's an italian breakfast pizza <laughs> the flag of italy so you know it's authentic and then when you open it up it's, uh, I can't see it, but... There you go. Yep. So that's sausage and bacon, egg and cheese for breakfast. That's not a typical one. That's kind of like a, uh, a Roni left the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it's, he said um, A Roni, it is so good. It was so, wasn't deal. it good? Oh, yeah. Oh, very it was good. amazing. It, um, um, and I also got a huge, you should have brought the soda. I got, he brought me a huge soda for my meeting, too. I, I mean, it was so healthy this morning. Italiano vero. Mm? <laughs> right? See? Um, but a typical American breakfast is usually like a bowl of cereal, a bowl of oatmeal. You might have eggs, sausage, or bacon. Um, some people just grab like a banana and nuts for breakfast or fruit. Mm -hmm. Some people don't eat breakfast because they don't feel like it. Uh, protein bars or a protein shake is something we have for breakfast. Coffee. Coffee. Well, we don't drink coffee, yeah. but a lot of Americans do drink coffee. <laughs> yeah. Marina says, I'm hungry. It, it was good. It was very so good. good. I'm going to have it for lunch, <clears throat> maybe not, for dinner. Not very healthy, but not very expensive. Yep. Cento per cento, Aroni said. All right, um, what time do you have to go? We got to wrap this up. I have to go in a few minutes, yeah. I have a All meeting right. in, in a little bit. Any uh, last minute questions before we we get going? Michelle has some uh, one kilogram equals 2.2 .2 pounds. Oh, hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Oh, peanut butter, yes. Uh, peanut butter with bread is another one. Like toast, toast with jelly or toast with uh, jam or toast with peanut butter. So from, I'm, I'm stereotyping here. So you can't say this about everybody, but many Americans like peanut butter. Mm. Many Europeans do not like peanut butter. I'm wondering about the rest of the world and Brazil, is that peanut butter? And is Deekshan still here? That's really late in India, but I wonder India, do they like peanut butter? Uh, croissants with um, butter or with Nutella is huge too. Or donuts. Donuts and coffee um, can be huge as well. We're very healthy eaters here in the United States. <laughs> Aren't we one of the most overweight countries? I believe. I would <coughs> Excuse me. And I know the South is really overweight because we've, if you watch the video, we talk a lot about what the South eats and it's not very healthy, but it's very tasty. Uh, James feels that Americans don't care about food that much. I would agree, um, and we are such a new country that we don't really have any traditional foods. A lot of times we look to the Italians or we look to Thai food has been very popular here in the last couple of years. Mm. I think when you think of American food, you might think of like barbecue, Hamburgers, hamburger, hot, hot dogs. dogs on a grill, chicken, barbecue chicken with barbecue sauce. Oh. Vegetables, frying vegetables. So in India, peanut butter, mm. according to Deekshanch, and 
sometimes, Axel in some, Brazil. Yeah, sometimes my son and I will eat peanut butter just off a spoon. It's a great, it's great protein oh. and very filling. D Chant says so. Um, peanut butter and bananas, though. Oh, that's good. Awesome. That's really good. And if you've ever heard about Elvis, um, Elvis would do peanut on on bread, peanut butter, mayonnaise, and bananas. It's it's. Um, and sometimes they would make it warm. The Elvis sandwich is known in certain restaurants. That's what you would call the Elvis. You could get the Elvis. So I think that's disgusting. <clears throat> Eduardo would like to know if we know who Jose Andres is. Do you I, know? I don't think I do, no. No, sorry. Uh, Doris is saying we have peanut, but it isn't common. Bread and butter. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I love Italian bread. I don't know, Roni probably doesn't even know what, what it, but it's like a loaf of white bread and uh, we like it with garlic and butter on it. That's, yeah. that's very good. We have Italian bread and I wonder in Italy if they just call it bread. But we have Italian bread, we have French bread. Roni <laughs> says the idea of eating a pizza for breakfast makes me gag. That's because you haven't had it yet. Yeah, you should it's try good. it. It's the, good. So a lot of times when we order a pizza at night and there's leftover, um, we just leave it out, and my kids love to eat it cold for breakfast. I, I'm not a huge fan of pizza the next day. I'm hoping this breakfast pizza is good the next day, but if you tried it, Aroni, I think you would love it. Yeah, and uh, Marina says that people from all over the world have brought food to the United States. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so true. So true. All right. Oh, <laughs> ciabatta bread. Mmm, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. I don't know. I haven't. I'm sorry, Eduardo. I haven't. Uh, oh, Vierslav has to go. Yeah, we have to go pretty soon, too. Mm -hmm. But. <clears throat> oh, so Axel is talking about for breakfast, we have toast filled with ham and cheese or coffee or milk. Uh, mm. I have seen that at Governor's. They have like a, we call it a French toast ham and cheese. They do. Um, it's a little salty and a little sweet together. Um... Yeah, Andrew Smith, uh, along with pizza and burgers there. Uh, so many French, Italian restaurants. Absolutely. French, Italian, uh, Mexican restaurants. I love Mexican. American Mexican. Mm -hmm. But we, in our town, we do have, um, there are some people who, mm. their parents immigrated from Mexico many, many years ago, but they cook what they say is authentic Mexican food. We know that in the United States, we have Chinese food. What we call Chinese food is not traditional Chinese food, but. Now I'm getting hungry. Yeah, it's about lunchtime, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Was it 12.30, yep. 12.30? And you have to eat before you go to back to your- uh, Probably, or I'll, I'll eat your... during my meeting. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot of listening mm -hmm. today, so. Well, thank you all yep. so much for joining. We'll try to get Jamie back again soon. And uh, tomorrow, Olive Garden. Yes, that is authentic Italian food. I love Olive Garden. Oh my gosh, that was my favorite place to eat in high school. Like anywhere, if I went on a date, I'd be like, let's go to Olive Garden. They have the best breadsticks. They have the best salad, the best croutons and dressing on their salad. And then I love their fettuccine Alfredo. All right, World Central Kitchen. I'll check that out. But thank you all so much for joining. Mm. We got we to gotta get out of here. Thank you, guys. It was nice thank to you. see everybody again. Hopefully he invites me back. <laughs> and I'll go uh, live again tomorrow, I think, at some point. And hopefully I'll have that mega lesson ready about rivers. A lot of stuff there. Asma, thank you so much for thank joining. Thank you, Asma. It's a lot of fun all the time. Mega, thank you. India, it's got to be so late, no? Thank you, India, Brazil. Hungry, Italy, thank you all so Brazil. much. We'll see you guys, and adios amigos.